afternoon and welcome back to Gulfstream Park. Thank you for joining us here on this Thursday afternoon on Gulfstream Today. I'm Gabby Godette, joined by Ron Nicoletti here to tackle this 11 race program and a uh, beautiful day here in South Florida. A little breezy though. A little breezy and I've uh, got to check on the wind uh, w which way it's going because it seems to be blown from behind. It's not New Elm Lute course here but as you mentioned, beautiful day, fast main track, firm turf course and if you don't know about it, we have a big carryover in the Rainbow Six. Uh, Gabby will be telling you about that in just a moment but there should be a fun day racing we got 11 races on tap and we did have uh, an, a, a tough sequence yesterday I say that with a little uh, a, a pause because obviously we did have some favorites actually win in the sequence but we also had some oddball horses win as well and we actually had two live singles going into the fa final leg but big uh, long shot singles big long shots and you know we tell us people all the time the consolation yesterday for six out of six paid fourteen thousand dollars so yeah. you know even if you don't get the single ticket you know that ticket if you put some money into it you got a chance of uh if maybe not getting the whole jackpot getting at least a uh, 14,000 and you could add that back and try and hit it the next day a very nice <laughs> payday I would say I'd be happy with 14,000 I don't know about you Ron but we'll take a look at the uh our featured wagers and our carryovers today and we started all off in race one we do start with the rolling super high five that's a dollar bet and we do start off with the 50 cent early pick five as we get into the six race on this 11 race program it kicks off the 20 cent rainbow six 2.7 million dollars in that carryover and race se seven kicks off our 50 cent late pick five as well so we'll get right into the action and we started off with a race one on the main track a mile and a 16th uh, open 6,250 claimer and I think in this race, it might pay to be creative, but it's hard to get creative in this yeah, race. Yeah, well, I, you know, and I had to put the early pick five ticket together today, and I can only go three deep in here. I wanted to keep it leveled. So I, I have a single, actually, today. So I, I'll show you the ticket there. And I, it's, it comes in the fifth race. It's the four determined lady. But I went two deep, three deep in here with the one, two, and three. Uh, you know, if I wanted to expand this ticket, this is the race where I would go a little deeper because I, I don't have any true confidence. And you see, as I said, three, 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 and three, and then single in race number five today. I like that you threw in a long shot there, the one better man, but uh, also using the two uh, legitimate horses, the two Thunder Run and the three Peter Castle Boy. And these two horses actually uh, competed against each other. Two starts back on the 23rd of January. Thunder Run got the better of Peter Castle Boy that day. And if you kind of watch the replay, Peter Castle Boy saved all the ground down on the inside rail, whereas Thunder Run had to angle out at the top of the stretch, lose some ground in that final turn so that's why I revert back to Thunder Run but th I think the main problem of this race is the serious lack of pace there's no pace in this race and I really wasn't enamored with Thunder Run's last race but all things being equal and they certainly are in the opening race I put Thunder Run on top and that was the reason uh, you know for putting those two Peter Castle Boy and Thunder Run on top but uh, I added the one better man as you said a little bit of a long shot in there at 10 to 1 and these horses are very pace dependent though they don't have a lot of natural speed I probably Thunder Run has a little bit more speed than Peter Castle Boy, but who is the speed pace of the race? The four street rage was sent heavily two starts back. That actually didn't work out very well. He was beaten double digit lengths. And the six, Tis, t tis Time is Now, uh, used to have speed, but we really haven't seen him pick up his feet in the early stages of the race at all lately. Well, that's the reason I used the one better man. He has shown speed in previous races at the distance and can turn out being on the inside. Maybe the controlling speed in this otherwise paceless race. Uh, Pedro Sobozo is the champion. A, tra a trainer, excuse me, got Eddie Dominguez in the saddle. Uh, whoever goes to the lead in this race might be uh, sharp and be uh, uh, good enough to win it. This might be a rider's race. I, I mm. agree with you. Whoever is cognizant of the fact that there's not a lot of speed and they go and take advantage of that could be the victor here. But uh, Emisio Jaramillo, that's why I threw in the four, is because he's one rider that I've been paying attention to, that he's very cognizant of track conditions, of race shapes, and he might very well be one to maybe send his horse early. So we'll see how that race one shakes out but definitely uh, kind of a tricky race we'll take a look at the second race though an open 12,500 claiming event six furlongs onto the main track and the six Bohem de Lavi it does look like perhaps the class of the race yeah this one moved to the Bruno Tesori Bon Vita claim after stalking the pace and getting beat a neck that was against $12,500 state bred optional claimers at the distance uh, uh, John Velasquez will be in the saddle today I believe so uh, lots of things to like about the 
number six horse in here. And let's see what he was on the two to one on the warning line. If you look at her race two starts back under the Oscar Gonzalez barn, uh, it was one of her worst performances uh, as of late, but she chased the brutal early fractions, uh, 21 and change, 44 and change for the half as well behind the likes of Scuba Sue, has, who has really been in sharp form lately. So I thought she was well placed last time out. Chat Hills was a horse that beat her, but that was a, a mare that had been competitive against tougher company. So she meets an easier field, in my opinion, here today. And what do you do besides that? You have the one simple as that to ran OK on a sloppy sealed track behind a gate to wire winner. But was that uh, enhanced at all by the conditions of the track? And it was a small field. Yeah, it was a small field. And, uh, you know, I, I just thought maybe it's as simple as that, that this horse will go run well when going back to the uh, from the turf to the main track today. So threw it in second. And the horse that you did use in second, Sherry Angel, I have a third. Yeah, Sherry Angel. This is another one who's dropping in class and uh, is coming off a considerable layoff. I, the big question is, can this horse be fit and ready to go off the layoff? The barn doesn't do a, uh, have tremendously high statistics with these 180 plus day layoffs, but is getting a needed class relief. The seven twinkling time I'm also throwing in there because this is a, a mare who, again, you look at your favorite who's been facing restricted Florida bread company, at least in her last start, and she's just exiting much tougher fields. So using her in there at a nice price. We'll move on to the third and open 6,250 claiming event. Five and a half furlongs onto the main track. And it does look like this race really falls in between two horses, whether it be the five right on ready or the six keeping it zeal. Yeah, and I went with the six keeping it zeal. It's wheeling back at the same level and distance after getting beat a half length by a, a repeat winner. Help a while came back and went. Help a ride, excuse me, came back to win on Sunday. Uh, Renee Araya is the trainer. Luis Saez in the saddle. So we don't know if that race would help a ride and thought maybe this would be uh, uh, the logical one. But you're right. It was hard to separate either the six or the five right on ready. It's, it's hard to be logical about this race because keeping it zeal has that outside control position but it's hard to overlook that right on ready has actually defeated keeping it zeal several times in the past so can they turn the tables I think uh, last time out perhaps it might pay off to look past right on ready's last race I had a tough time because it this is the type of race where you get horses at this lower level who have been racing against each other and it all depends on race shape and who's ready to show up to the plate that day because one uh, race can uh, one horse can turn the tables on another Quite easily. Yeah, and right, I'm ready getting in with seven pound apprentice you know, John Cruz, and so getting a little light in the weight. And we both used the one in third CD goal now in the George Navarro bond. The Gelly makes his first start. He went up, he chased the pace, he faded behind a hard knocking repeat winner called the Fair Heaven. We seem to mention his name a lot. He seems to be coursing through all the all the uh, level claiming races. He has run very well. That was a 62 uh, 50 claimer on January 10th. The barn is really good with new additions to the shed row, and maybe it's as simple as that as George Navarro uh, getting getting this horse and, uh, uh, you know, winning the race with it. And you never know how long this horse has been in the George Navarro barn, if this horse is going to improve. But they are, they do make a, a note of putting the 10-pound apprentice on board here today. So in with a lightweight, draws that real post position. So you, one would think that they might aggressively send this horse from the rail. And, that, and, and that's what the barn does. Too. Yes. They like the They sand, love so speed. They love speed. <laughs> <laughs> we'll move on to the fourth race, the maiden $25,000 event, seven furlongs onto the main track here. And uh, looking at the field, we have the four Palace Rhythm. And I guess we'll start the conversation off with this Todd Pletcher clash dropper. And for what it's worth, we do have a nice little stat here for the barn over the past five years with maiden special weight to maiden claimers, turf to dirt, only a small sample size, but they do very well. 44%, and I thought that was a very large ROI coming out of the Todd Fletcher barn, but they still have a very positive ROI, and they all seemingly run well. Yeah, and you know, he, does, he doesn't do this a lot, so when he does do it, it pays nicely, because people say, no, the horse is dropping down, going from the main track to the turf, and it, or whatever, vice versa, and that's where you get, you can catch a Todd Fletcher horse at a price. The one-star Charlie, though, you opt to try to beat the source with, uh, for first off the claim for Nick, Nicholas Gonzalez does uh, stay at that particular distance and yes he did break a little slowly last time out he was rushed up a little bit he was in an awkward position throughout the race but he has been uh, exposed against lower level maiden claimers and now he has to step up to a tougher field well I thought on that particular day the inside was not maybe the place to be that particular sure. day and I just thought he you know he was uh, he was uh, finished third he was the odds on choice uh, against maidens going seven for I think maybe this is the spot
spot. Uh, maybe he got bogged down on the inside that day, and I'm expecting, uh, you know, Star Charlie. Uh, going to break from the rail again, but uh, as you've watched over the last few days, uh, speed has been very good on the main track and along with the turf course. So I think Star Charlie may be able to rebound. Palace Rhythm, you know all the reasons there. Todd Pletcher, Javier Castellano. Hard to leave that one off the ticket. And we also have the three hashtag win for trainer John Service, who's had a very good meet so far, and a statistic for his maiden claimer, first-time starters, primarily on the dirt, 21% and still a little bit of a positive ROI, and they finish in the money 50% of the time as well. So I, I think this is one to perhaps pay attention to. I think is well posted at the seven furlongs, and if really nobody else shows up, I think the barn's going to have this one ready to fire and debut. Yeah, and uh, Paco Lopez in the saddle in excellent conditions with the trainer John Service. Move on to the fifth race, a restricted maiden special weight, a uh, mile and a 16th on the turf, and uh, a race where you could go in multiple different directions. And we'll go back and take a look at uh, the break, first of all, of the number five warranty here. Uh, this was on the 21st of January, and you can see this horse breaking out of the nine posts here, trained by Chad Brown. Javier Castellano was aboard. She does not get off to a good start at all. It almost looked like she dwelt and then hopped and then she was a little green we had the seven horse very green in front of her and that compromised her from really getting into the groove early uh, the one thing about that race though was that she did have the ability to kind of save a little bit of ground going into that first turn she was a little green she needs to improve on that i think today but now we can see the number 10 determined lady as warranties kind of in the back of the pack and she's really not closing from off the pace but af as we've seen the weeks progress it has been uh, pretty tough to close when you're that far back at the top of the stretch, but a determined run from determined lady and uh, Perhaps she's one to definitely respect. She's your single in the early pick five He's my single and if you watch that race you saw a horse uh, Continually uh, pulling back check that was determined lady after the start of that never really got a clean place to run uh, You know and I thought this horse would be closer to the first uh, 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 pace today got bumped pretty soundly and I just think that uh, with a clean trip going to be closer uh, and can win there had to get a single in there so I used the number four determined lady on top of my ticket we also have some newcomers including the seven show me who has been posting some pretty solid turf workouts as well by lemon drop kid out of a mare who actually makes this horse uh, have to a grade three winner on the dirt and now she hasn't produced a turf winner, but you obviously have the Lemon Drop Kid pedigree do very, very well uh, early on, uh, especially on the turf. But you found a, a stat that I believe we want to show here. Yeah, and this is an interesting stat I thought here, and you'll see it when it pops up about uh, uh, trainer Mark Cassie. He's only two for 116. That's 10 percent, uh, uh, you know, 30 percent. 33% in the money, but only $1.29 ROI with maiden special weight debut runners on the turf at a mile or more in the past five years. And this horse is debuting, of course, today at this mile in the 16th distance. Just something I throw out there that uh, that doesn't seem to uh, bode very well for them, but I put the horse in second anyway. Well, I think one to respect because we do have a whole bunch of unknowns and we don't have a lot of solid ground to stand on. We have the one majestic Maria to the inside. The barn actually does very well with first time on the turf here at Gulfstream, uh, two two for six and three for six in the money, and the, the payoff is astronomical because they've been huge prices, but is by Majestic Warrior. I just thought that Warranty had a lot of upside here. We have seen Determined Lady. She has already had several chances to break her maiden, whereas Warranty, this is only her second start. You'd have to think that she's going to improve in her second start, And uh, but I think both of those horses you have to respect. You have to respect. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm jumping, uh, you know, I'm trying to beat the Warranty because that's the one to be yeah. in there, and I'm trying to, you know, make the early pick five pay something that decent. Okay, well, we are going to take a quick break. That is races one through five and the early pick five. When we come back, we're going to talk about the Rainbow Six, that carryover. It's awful big today. We'll talk about it right after this.
Welcome back to Golfstream today. Now looking at the Rainbow Six. How does $2.7 million sound to you, Ron? Sounds fantastic. <laughs> and it was over $3 million yesterday. You know, of course, 70% 70, 70 goes back, uh, you know, to the betters if it doesn't get hit. So uh, it'll be well over $3 million if you get that single ticket today. Uh, $3 million, I think, would uh, change your life just a tad. And even if you don't take it down with a loan ticket, as you were alluding to in the beginning of part of the show, uh, very nice payouts as yesterday returned at four, over $14,000 if you hit six out of six, obviously right. with multiple tickets. So it does still pay to play, even if you aren't the loan ticket, but 2.7 million carryover. We'll take a look at my ticket, $57.60, using four horses to start us off here. I think there's multiple ways to go here in race six, but keen off of the the seven in race seven, and that is Quaver. Uh, we'll take a look at her replay a little bit later on using three horses in race eight, two horses in race nine, three in race 10, and capping it off with four horses in the final leg of the sequence. I had a bit of a tough time with that last race. It's a maiden $16,000 race on the turf and many, many ways to go. But we'll start it off with race six, five furlongs onto the turf course. And, um, uh, taking a look at this race, we'll actually go back and look at the two, a woman with pants and uh, one other horse in the seven April Rose. Uh, both of these horses come out of the same race here. And we saw uh, they actually dead heated for second in this particular race. We can see April Rose closing from off the pace. But I th honestly thought that it was a bit of a stronger performance for the two, a woman with pants, because we saw her energy. She was closing late. She had really good late energy, whereas the five April Rose, it just kind of looked like she didn't want to pass that horse just to her inside. So visually, I thought it was a stronger performance from the two, a woman with pants, and she's a little bit more better posted towards the inside. So that's a, 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 a one that you have to respect. I'm using both here on my pick six ticket. Well, I went with the seven April Rose on top of my ticket, and there and for just for the it was game and defeat I thought she rallied to come within the neck of defeating Simba what I liked that this was the race shape I think she's going to sit off what I see is a lot of p uh, pace in here and, and I just thought maybe she'll close uh, from post seven and get the job done uh, should have swift early fractions up front but I can understand uh, you know thinking the two ran better in am when you watch the replay you certainly can make a case for that there's a decent amount of speed in here I think the four of my little darlings might be the fastest of all she does have a tendency to be pretty versatile but speed on the ground at five furlongs. I'm using the four of my little darlings in the early, uh, in the pick six as well. The five Blavatsky I thought was one that could, in, in fact, uh, improve now on the drop back down in class. They claim this uh, Philly a couple starts back for 16. I guess they thought highly of her. They kept her at the same level. They stepped her up against Allowance Optional Claiming Company last out. She was 22 to 1. It was a very tough field, and I thought she was a bit outclassed, but when she did face $16,000 claimers in the past, she did get into a little bit of trouble at the quarter pole. I think she could actually show a little bit more speed today if she's unhindered by some of those circumstances. And Julian Leperu, he's been paying attention to how the turf course has been playing. He's been aggressive with sending these horses, so I would imagine he might do the same with this horse. Yeah, you know, this daughter of old fashion has the tactical ability, especially at this level, I think, to be on or near the lead against this caliber of competition. I think the drop is going to help, and I totally agree and with uh, Julian Leperu in the saddle. Horse that uh, I used on my ticket, too, in my final, uh, in my uh, Rainbow Six ticket. Okay, we'll move on to the seventh race. It does kick off the 50 cent late pick five, another five furlong sprint, but this time an allowance optional claimer. And do you have the late pick five? So let's take a look. Let's at take a look. I did not single like you did with number seven Quaver, but certainly used it along with the number three Scuba Sue, who you mentioned just a little earlier. That's in good form right now. So I went three deep. And in the second leg, I went four deep with my long shot is in there. We'll talk about that later on. Two deep, two deep, and then three deep for a $48 ticket. So uh, we'll see see how this progresses, but I think you might have the right horse with your single in here, and that's the number seven quaver. We'll go back and take a look at her replay, actually, when she broke her maiden at Belmont. Uh, in her subsequent start, she did go to Mammoth in the Crank It Up and was defeated by Lady Shipman, but the way this horse ran, 
I thought was so impressive. You can see her closing from off the pace, the number seven kind of making her closing one run right now. And I'm watching this replay and I'm looking at the PPs as well, thinking to myself, how does this horse win by two lengths? <laughs> and she just completely explodes. Maybe everybody else, maybe the pace was tiring a little bit, but she did it absolutely effortlessly. And she came back to have a credible performance against Lady Shipman. She really gave Lady Shipman a run for her money at one point. She was closing from off the pace behind the likes of such a talented uh, turf sprint filly. So uh, this horse has a lot of talent. The biggest concern is the layoff. Yeah, she's a $200,000 daughter of Blame, and she's working really consistently at Palmetto, Palm Meadows and has uh, Javier Castellano uh, looking to uh, find a, a perfect uh, spot for this horse. And there's a lot of speed in here. Even with the scratch of Aquino, there's some, scra uh, some speed in here. And, and you know, Javier Castellano, one of the best at judging the pace. Uh, I like to pick two and put it right on top of my selection. The three scuba suit tries the turf. Uh, once again, she had two prior turf tries and only uh, got a higher high speed speed figure of only 56. Now, she's really going to have to improve that figure in order to beat a horse like Quaver. Yeah, it's George Navarro, and he's got Luis Ciaes handling the surface switch this afternoon. So, uh, she's got speed. She's going to be up there. She's one of the horses I was talking about that's going to be on the engine. Might set it up perfectly for Quaver, or if she gets lucky, steal this thing on the front end. Spinning wheel was won uh, by Smart Strike out of a Stormcat mare. This uh, Mayor, this filly is actually a half to a horse by, na by the name of Space Mountain, who recently won a maiden special weight here on the turf at seven and a half furlongs. So there's some turf pedigree. Yes, it is a big step up to try her against this type of uh, company here today. It's a tough spot to try to do that, but she has some really nice turf workouts as well. Yeah, I have her on, uh, you know, I think she can run well in that spot. I also used to meet me for a smoke is making first start since beating, uh, getting beat a half length by a really hard knocking horse called Thinking of Mon, finishing second in front of a pair of next out winners in that particular race. So second to a good horse, a couple of next out winners behind it. Maybe this horse can carve out a trip. It's Dave Cass and Emma C. L. Jaramillo. And she's definitely formful going into the race. We'll move on to the eighth race, though, a maiden $50,000 event. A mile and a 16th on the turf course. The six Dean's ticket, seven to two on the morning line, and the seven Candida at five to two. We'll take a look at uh, the replay that uh, Russ Is Ipspa Ipsa comes out of and uh, Dean's ticket as well. We'll go we'll watch this race immediately exiting the gate because Dean's ticket unfortunately had a break from the way outside oh. and Resp Ipsa was towards the inside here. Dean's ticket, the rider did a fantastic job clearing the field, saving the ground, saving ground going into the first turn. Not a tremendous amount of ground going into the first turn, but she got had the ability, but we'll see Reps Ipsa completely clip heels and what a fantastic job of the rider to stay in the saddle. So it's one thing that you just have to completely cross out, th draw a line through it. Whereas Dean's ticket, I think this is more of a telling replay because she did go to the lead. She was she saved ground going in the first turn, and she just couldn't fire against similar company two starts back. Yeah, you know, uh, I put Dean's ticket on top. If I look at my uh, uh, program today, my long shot is Res Ipsa. I just oh, think okay. that's always 15 to 1 on the morning line, so I'm with you in there, and I use that, as you saw, on my uh, Rainbow Six ticket. I'm in my late pick five ticket. That's my long shot of the day, so I'm in agreement with you. Yeah. Put Dean's ticket on there. It's Javier Castellano. Gary Contessa topped the daughter of Gio Ponte. And the seven, Candido, what do you do with a horse like this? Because I didn't find any excuses for her in that race. She really just didn't show her feet. Maybe she'll prefer a firmer course, but I believe you have a statistic for the Todd Pletcher. Yeah, part. I want to show you a statistic here. And it, it's, it's, you know, it's pretty telling. Todd, Todd Pletcher, he's 12 for 70, 30%. 59% in the money with a positive ROI of 235. Maiden special weight to maiden claim is on the turf in the past five years. So uh, this horse, you know, as you said, takes an immediate drop, which is a little scary, but it's Todd Pletcher. A good stat there. Uh, and, you know, Johnny Velasquez, it's a daughter of congrats. I think it's someone you have to you have to protect yourself with when you're putting your ticket together. Uh, and I just thought uh, I would add it, you know, on my late pick five ticket. I did, too. I used the 1-6 and the 7 in that leg of the pick 6. But I'm liking your 1 the one yeah. yeah well it's an unknown i mean right. the negative is that she was 77 to one when she debuted but <laughs> she has some turf pedigree she has excuses and sometimes if you're not fully confident in a horse like dean's ticket those are that's the direction you might want to go in We'll take a look at the ninth race, the two other than allowance optional claimer, six and a half furlongs onto the main track. And we have the three pursuing fate, who's immediately exiting a victory against first level allowance horses and looks to compete against this two other then. But 
I thought this was a tough race. We have the one sweet success to the inside who's faced grade two company, grade three company, and she used to have a lot of success. However, she did look like she had a slight decline in form in her last couple of starts and <clears throat> not a very strong statistic. And uh, you and I both don't use her, but she right. is four to one on the morning line. And if she gets bet, this might be something to pay attention right. to. Trainer Rusty Arnold on the dirt with sprinters with similar layoffs, only 10% and a negative ROI, but they do hit the board so they run well they just don't necessarily find the winner circle yeah like as you mentioned uh, you know this one four to one uh, third choice did not use it on my ticket but uh, uh i'm trying to wake up my man nick zito today with number six west coast chick who's turning back in distance after returning from a three-month layup to set a, a pressured early pace in that race finished third it was a sixty-two thousand five hundred dollar optional claimer going a one turn mile uh nick zito worked her twice uh, at a half mile in preparation for the turn back in distance i thought those were pretty decent works i like to turn back in distance uh six west coast chick i'm gonna put on my ticket i don't know what it is on the morning line or anything like that five to one or something like that and see if nick zito could win the, the ninth race this afternoon i think we're gonna see more fond of sarah today yeah. i really do and i'm willing to give her one other chance because i didn't think she'd run well off that layoff two starts back on the 8th of january she proved me wrong it was a very it was a a fast race too she wired the field i think the track could really benefit her today and last out she had to face the likes of stone tastic i thought it was a overall a very tough field and she's not necessarily facing company like that today she couldn't keep up with those strong early fractions they went 22 and change 44 and change for the half at six and a half furlongs and they finished quickly as well right so I'm just thinking she was taken a little bit out of her wheelhouse, but she might be the fastest early today, and she could use that to her advantage. Yeah, no, I did not use her on a ticket, but I can understand perfectly why you're using it. And uh, by this time of the day, we're a little early on, you know, if the speed has been good on the main track, and this horse, as you said, can end up being the fastest horse in the race. The 10th race on the card, an open $16,000 event, seven and a half furlongs onto the turf course, and they're going to have to catch the likes of the four fan base in here for trainer George Navarro and how do you beat a horse like this? I'm going to try to, but you have to respect the four with all its speed. Yeah, cutting back to seven and a half furlongs after returning from a two-month freshman Yunach's fourth consecutive turf victory, but it was his third straight score at the $16,000 level when going a mile last time out. This horse was winning at the $8,000 level, stepped up, everybody said, oh, it's going to be too much. Wasn't a problem, it kept on winning. So uh, hard to, to uh, fault this horse in any way, but uh, you know, you gotta try and beat it sometime and you did it with the number seven and that is, uh, yes, I'm lucky, who's getting a pretty much of a class relief today. My question is when's the luck gonna run out yeah. with fan base? This horse has been very lucky to win on the lead, actually showed a bit of a new dimension last time out to uh, show a, a, some versatility, but was just recently facing $8,000 claimers. When you have a horse, and this horse could be a horse that's on the incline, the up-and-comer, whereas the seven, yes, I'm lucky, might be going the opposite direction. But there's no doubt about it. He's been facing far better company. We see with exaltation a horse he faced two starts back. Yes, he was beaten five lengths, but that horse came back to win one of those starter stakes on President's Day right. with a 97 buyer speed figure. If he finishes a few lengths behind a horse that's been running consistent 90, mid-90 buyer speed figures, you gotta, you have to like him on the class drop. Right? I mean, you do have to like him in the class. This is the lowest level of his career, so this is it. I mean, you know, he's gone the other way as they say but I think this horse might have found a level where he can be successful in there and as you're right you're right you never know what these horses like fan base when that one day it's really hard to reel off five six seven victories especially at this level but uh, the bond has uh, been known to do that and we'll see what happens with four fan base I also use the six whisper on the window try and make it two in a row he rallied from off the pace to defeat his this caliber competition it was a perfectly timed drive by Chucky Corey Lannery it's a hard knocking seven year old but he's going to need his best to beat fan base. He will need his best and a well-timed move to close behind the pace. I just hope fan base gets a little company on the front end. If not, it might be all <laughs> said and done <laughs> from the get-go. We'll look at the 11th and final race on the program. Five furlongs onto the turf course. Open, uh, sorry, made in $16,000 event. And this 
you look at this race and you're just left kind of scratching your head, what's going to happen? I'm interested to see the direction you go in because I used four horses in the final leg of the pick six. Well, I went with the number 12 variety of colors who's dropping to the $16,000 level, turning back to five furlongs. No wins at this distance, yes, but five starts, a second, two seconds and a third after facing $35,000 types on both the uh, turf and the dirt uh, since returning from the layer. It's the daughter of Indy Wind, trained by Jane Sabelli, jockey MSCL Jaramillo, trying to carve out a winning trip from that post. So I just thought with all those things I just mentioned, the drop, I just thought this horse uh, run well at the distance before, got to deal with that outside post. So I put it on top of my ticket. And she has a kind of stalking speed. She's definitely not fast enough to clear right. and perhaps go to the lead. She, it, it all depends on who goes where going into the turn, quite frankly, because everybody they go so fast going into that first turn. Sometimes from that outside post, you lose a little bit of ground, and that can just be the the kind of nail on the coffin there for the race. But I went in a, a direction, the seven value baby speaking. Uh, I believe the, the connections kind of liked this really last time out getting to the turf. They thought they'd, she'd improve getting to the turf and she very much did. And it was a good race. She was uh, pressing the inside pace setter the entire way around there. I thought she put in the majority of the dirty work to set up for glass of wine. Who was sitting in the catbird yep. seat, kind of just rallied home from there. So I go back to her, but I do like a long shot. 12 to one here on the morning line, the 10 romantic forever. I thought could maybe improve cutting back to the five furlong. This is a horse who has been chasing or showing speed at two turns on the turf, now cuts back to one turn on the turf, a distance that she's never been before, and she just looks like one that might suit the five furlongs very well. Yeah, and the bottom of the shop, it's Antonio Sano, and he's got Diego Gomez uh, in, in the saddle today. So, yeah, that's the kind of horse you need to have on your, uh, you know, your Rainbow Six ticket to maybe take down the whole jackpot. I also use the six Dreaming of Evers, making the third start of a current form cycle, looking to prove on that fifth place finish behind the horse you had on top, and that is Value Baby. Mike Petro does a good job. Elvis Trio in the saddle. And the four, Maka to me, is a horse I'll be using there in the pick six. Tyler Gaffleon with four victories on yesterday's card. I hope he can transition that good fortune onto today. That's the fourth horse you're using on the ticket. So we'll yes. see if Tyler Kenny won the last race yesterday, too. So Did. Hopefully yeah. uh, that uh, lightning can strike twice, right? <laughs> Same race. Well, that uh, is a wrap for us here. Races one through 11. But I think a very fun late uh, pick five. Late pick five and pick six sequence. Once again, we have that $2.7 million carryover, and the pick six starts in race six today, but plenty of other betting opportunities. This has been fun. Yeah, it's been fun. We'll <laughs> see how it works out fast and firm. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll be back through those races one through 11, but Larry Colmus will be coming up shortly with scratches and changes. Good luck. Our day begins early. 